Hi, it's Reverend David. We've been out of the building a little while, so I'm touring around these different parts, sometimes the places that we don't get to see. And today, we're gonna to take a look inside the big basement and, and see why it earned its name, and see all of the junk that the big basement is full of. And I have with me today, my trusty assistant, is Josie, my daughter, who's coming along to help us around. So let's take a look in. We've come down to the bottom of the stairs, and we're headed in to the big basement. Go ahead, Joe. So here we go. This basement is underneath the sanctuary. So if we look up on the other side of that ceiling is the floor of the sanctuary. And we're right now coming in towards the front. So the chancel, that raised platform where the pulpit and things are, is right up here. Right now I'm standing more or less under where the organ console is. This big basement has been a lot of things at different times over the years. When it was originally designed, it was just storage. And this wooden door at the far end, we'll head down this way, is the door into the crypt. So we did another one of these crypt tours a while ago. And the, uh, the crypt was designed so that they could keep expanding it over time. And the bays of the crypt, the different you know rooms where, where the urns are, where the niches are, would go into the bays of the basement. So that as time goes on, this door, you can keep expanding on and on and on. Now, right now it's full of all sorts of amazing stuff. Some of which is junk, some of which is not. So this bay is full of stuff for the Hyde Park transitional housing project. So for folks who are coming out of homelessness, the transitional housing project, uh, furnishes homes with furniture. Hello. So this is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Josie. <laughs> On this side, there's all sorts of archival materials from Meadville Lombard Theological School. Meadville Lombard, which used to be just across the corner from us and is now in downtown, has an incredible archives. When the Unitarian Universalist Association's headquarters moved, so they're back in Boston and they moved buildings a few years ago, they sent a ton of stuff to join the Meadville archives. And, uh, and here it rests, ready to join the Meadville archives as space becomes available. But besides those archives, the fresh stuff that came just a couple of years ago, there's also all of these shelves. And this is cataloged archives from Meadville Lombard. Yeah. Now, among these papers that are here, Yes, yeah, so Josie's got Just an example box. Boxes upon boxes. Are records from Jack Mendelssohn, who uh, was a minister of this church in the 1970s, among very many other things. So all his archived papers are here. Uh, down here, there are also archives from um, the Transylvanian Unitarians uh, and religious education. Uh, stuff and all sorts of incredible stuff. Picture books of Unitarian churches. Josie, I am so curious what this thing is. Can you just carefully open this up? Sure. And see what is in here? And if there are really, here, we'll come down the end. Yeah. If there are really picture oh, books book. of Unitarian churches, okay. what do we have? Um, they look like. Oh, they're books of photos. Okay, okay, okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Nice churches, am I right? <laughs> You are right. <laughs> and we'll put this right back in the same spot where we found it. There we go. So these are all Meadville's archives, uh, among the very many other archives they have. Uh, and so those stretch on through all of these shelves. On this side, this is all First Unitarian archival stuff. Now, some of it is just storage and overstock. So we've got about, I don't know, 25 years worth of empty binders over there. If you need binders, you know, I let me know. I remember when this was in the nursery. Yeah. Everything gets moved down here. Everything comes down here sooner or later. But then there's all sorts of great, great stuff. So these are our 175th anniversary water bottles. These are, besides being, you know, branded merch, do churches have merch? I think that they do in this case. Uh, these are really phenomenal water bottles. Um, 
else is down here? There are... Uh, yearbooks. Are yearbooks. Apparently. Oh, that's, that's uh, UUA yearbooks. But in here are church commemorative Ooh. plates. Oh, yeah. So this, yeah. Will you hold this up for us? So. So this it. is the commemorative plate. I don't know what year this is yeah. from. Uh, but, um, does it say? But it's before the steeple came down um, on the sanctuary. Dedicated in 1931. And it's bef think... it's also before Pennington Center was built. Hold yeah. it. So Pennington Center would be over there once it's built. So this is pre-1960 plates. Um, we should put them back into service. Yeah. <laughs> back to use. So there's other great stuff and all the junk that shows up in church basements. Oh, uh, right. Bank records from the 1940s. Perhaps we'll be audited someday for 80 years ago. There, there's all sorts of great stuff. Some of this tells really compelling stories about our history. And some of it is down here because the church basement, like all church basements, is where stuff goes just to ripen and, and live for a while. A couple of other things I wanted to show you. We're coming back towards where we started. Um, one thing I wanted to show you is the foundations so thrilling stuff foundations but i think this is really cool so this is the foundation of the church and it's poured concrete but what i love is you can still see in it the grain of the wood because back in 1929 when this would have been poured oh, it was yeah. all wood forms you know actual wood planks that made it up Coming through, we're going to duck back into this little room under the chancel. Get the lights on here. Ooh. We think this might have been the cold delivery chute. It's not entirely clear. Um, but back here, this is what I wanted to show you. Stand next to this just for a sec to give a sense of scale, right? With it down, it's like more than halfway. Right. It's huge. This is oh the God, weather vane crazy. that used to be at the very, very top of the steeple. So when we looked at that plate and there's the steeple on top, on top of the steeple is the weather vane, and this is it. The steeple got taken down about 20 years ago. Um, in the 90s, uh, it, they discovered that there was water seeping in and rotting out, rusting out the steel frame underneath the, the concrete and stone of the steeple tried really hard to shore it up. A decade later, discovered that repair didn't work and took it down. And here is all that remains uh, uh, of the steeple. It's solid. It's so through. solid. I, it's, it's unbelievably heavy. It's, it's it a is, lot. It's a lot. It's extra. Am I using that right? No. I'm still not <laughs> using that right. <laughs> So, back out again. Wait, there are power tools back there. Yeah, there are tools in there. At various times, that's been used as a, like a shop and uh, work area. At different times, this was used as shop and work area. Oh, we recycle. Indeed. So, I think of this space like the other basement. This is the church's room of requirement. Almost anything we need is down here, including this <laughs> so there's all all sorts of good stuff um, suitcases bedding strollers suitcase, high chairs uh, chairs my cabinets. favorite discovery though was uh, a year or two ago we wanted to do a puppet show for a, a story for all ages and we thought well how are we going to do this what can we like rig together to make a puppet theater kind of a thing and i said wait a minute let's look in the basement <laughs> and lo and behold in this basement there was a puppet there theater a just puppet theater. hanging out looks so, great yep it still gets used church room of requirement so here we are at the big basement And that's all there is to say. There's not a lot of like ritual significance to this place. It's just an awesome, huge basement 
full of random stuff. It's ginormous. <laughs> Thanks.